Hey guys, Otto here from Acquisition Partner. Now, first things first, my apologies. It's been a couple of weeks now since I've actually uploaded a, uh, a new video to the channel. There's been a number of different reasons why, namely that April and May have been actually our busiest and most successful dates to month for the Acquisition Partner brand. Loads of you guys have joined our flagship accelerator. We've had loads of you enroll in the Ecom Email Accelerator as well as join the community too. So we've we've had a last you know few weeks um, actually delivering and working with our clients, doing all of our builds, um, and that's kind of taken up the majority of our time. So what I want to do in this video is come back with a bang, and um, really the the kind of topic at hand that's come from this video um, has actually come out of a question one of our community members asked us about our agency onboarding process. Now how our agency onboarding process looks has changed over the six years that we've been running our business. But what I'm gonna do in this video is specifically show you how we uh, revitalized and transformed our onboarding process to basically reduce risk, reduce stress, um, and reduce the time it takes to actually bring a client on board and get all of the information we need in order for myself and my team to deliver our service, okay? So I'm gonna minimize my face here and talk through um, what you would probably understand to be the traditional agency model. And what I'm gonna do is basically go over this model here and I'm gonna show you how this old model of how we used to operate, and as you can see, I've highlighted it in red here because it's complicated, unnecessarily so. It's stressful. Um, it leaves too much kind of responsibility and room for error on um, you know, things outside of your control, such as your client's actions that they should be taking or haven't taken, um, and how we actually simplified that to uh, our onboarding process here, okay? So first things first, looking at the traditional agency model, this is how um, you know, if you're running a retainer based agency, this is probably what your process looks like. Okay, so you start off with prospecting and hopefully through your lead gen and cold outreach, whatever it might be, you get to a position where you can get on sales calls with your prospective client. Okay, so maybe that's a brand if you're in the e-com space, um, maybe you're doing lead gen, it might be a B2B client, anything like that. So any client that you are potentially trying to sell your service to, you're trying to get to a position here between prospecting uh, and sales where you can actually get them on a call. Okay, and if you're operating the traditional agency, model, chances are you won't just be doing one call, you'll be doing a second call, uh, possibly a third call, maybe even a fourth, fifth, sixth call, um, before you can actually start pitching a proposal and getting that proposal closed and the contract signed on the dotted line um, to getting paid by a new client, okay? So prospecting goes into sales, you're gonna have a number of different calls and obviously over this process here, this takes time, okay? And what we wanted to do when we revitalized our onboarding process was cut the amount of time it takes from prospecting to actually getting paid and delivering our service to your client, okay? So this is what this video is gonna help you uh, to work out with your business, all right? So from the sales uh, uh, process there, what you are aiming with the traditional agency model is to get to a point where you can actually deliver some value. Now, in the form of us, when we um, ran our e-com agency in this traditional kind of retainer-based model, what we would typically do is get our our um, prospective client brands Clavio logins as our email service provider so we're delivering email and SMS retention services we would want to see what they're doing from an email marketing perspective so that we could actually um, you know diagnose any issues they were having identify bottlenecks and then hit them with a uh, a, a proposal and a scope of works that we would then get paid therefore to carry out for them, okay? So from there, what you're doing is you're asking for logins. There might be a delay. They might say, yeah, you know, we'll give you our uh, Clavio login or Shopify login, whatever it might be, but then they go on holiday or they forget and you have to chase them up, okay? And all of these steps in this process are demanding more of your time, more of your resources and energy that you quite frankly won't have to uh, deploy against chasing up prospective clients, okay? So once you get to the point that you have the uh, logins, you're gonna then have to spend enough time going through an audit and whether you do that yourself or you give that to a member of your team, it's an important part of that proposal process, okay? Once you've done your audit and you've diagnosed all of these issues with their account, you're gonna have to write it up. Maybe you put it into a um, simple Google document or Google Slides, PowerPoint, whatever it might be. And then you're gonna have to get to the point where you actually present your findings to the client, okay? So already we're seeing that in this old model, we're going from prospecting, we've not gone through all the different elements of prospecting, because it's not really relevant to this video, but we're going through all these components and touch points that you're gonna experience through the sales and the kind of audit and delivery of free value, um, you know, steps in this chronological timeline, and you can already get an idea for how much time this is gonna be taking you, okay? So once you've gotten to this point, you're then in a position to put a proposal to the client. Now, 
I do not like the word proposals. I don't like the frame and the perspective that you operate out of when you say to a client, please, can I give you a proposal? Because at the end of the day, when you have a high ticket skill and um, you know you have a business that is of value and solves and delivers you know problem solving solutions um, that you charge a significant amount of money for, um, what you don't want to be doing is making a proposal and asking the client, oh, you know, please, we've, we've put together these ideas and please approve them. Okay, it's not the frame you want to operate from unless you are running a retainer based agency and you're happy making $500 per month to $1,000 per month for each of your clients. Okay, so putting that personal bias to, uh, to one side, you know, typically for argument's sake, you will create a proposal. And within that proposal, what you're going to go through is an itemized scope. Okay, so what we did at this time in our business genesis when we were operating that retainer based model was we would go over our audit and what the audit would do was not only provide free value to the prospective client um, where we would actually say, look, you know, the value of the audit is that you can take away all of these um, you know, implementations and these strategies and workflows. You can take them and deploy them yourselves or if you think they're of interest, let us present them to you and um, put, you, put you a scope of works. Okay? So within that scope, you're going to go over timelines as well. So you're going to talk about you know, the time it takes to actually deliver your service, when you expect to see results, all of those kind of nuts and bolts and you know, granular level um, sort of piece of admin items when it comes to actually creating a proposal. And then you're going to put forth a, uh, a, pro a pricing, a cost and go over budgets. Okay? So from there, what you're going to find, and perhaps you're struggling with this, maybe you're running an agency, you're doing short form content, you're delivering PPC, um, you know, Google ads, Facebook ads, whatever it might be. You may be thinking that you've delivered value, uh, you've done the hard work, you've got the proposal created and you've sent it to them and all they have to do is agree it. But what you will find nine times out of 10 is that coming from this frame of you know, putting, putting a suggestion to the client in, in this kind of um, format of a proposal is that they will come back and try and negotiate with you, okay? And in the sales process with, you know, working with any sort of client in any industry, there is gonna be a process of uh, back and forth when it comes to the negotiations. But one thing I found when running my business like this was that I didn't wanna do all of this <clears throat> hard work um, you know, with a new prospective client to get to a point where they wanted uh, a call to go over the proposal and then a second call to go over the scope and then a third call to go over questions they forgot to ask and, you know, and then maybe a fourth call to go over pricing and things like that, okay? All of those things, again, they drain your resources as a business owner. They drain the resources and the time and the money uh, that you're spending on your contractors or your employees, whether you have them in-house or not, okay? And these are all elements of bringing on new clients that lead up to onboarding that you want to basically eradicate in your business. And that's exactly what we did. And I'm gonna show you in a second exactly how we did it, okay? So typically, just to continue set, setting the scene here, once you've gone through negoti negotiations, you're gonna get to um, the commitment stage of the agreement, okay? And this typically is where you issue contracts. Contracts are based on the scope of works that you created. Scope of works are cre uh, created, obviously, on the audit that you presented to that prospective client. And again, what you're gonna find is that you're going to think as a business owner, great, you know, we've gone through all of this hard work and, and sort of legwork to get the client on the call. We've gone back and forth on sales calls. They've got a proposal. We've done the audit. They've got a scope of works. They understand the timeline. All they've got to do is sign the dotted line on the contract and then they go to you and go radio silent, okay? And you don't want to get in a position where you are doing that with, you know, however many prospective clients every single week because it will get to the point where you just have simply no time to deliver for the clients that you currently have or any time to do top level stuff like figuring out how to actually build a business that works and is scalable and is something you enjoy as opposed to one where you're stuck in the weeds, you know, chasing prospective clients that aren't even paying you and you haven't even made money from them yet, okay? So you would think, like I say, you get to the point where you send them a contract and uh, they're going to sign it, but they won't, okay? They will come back to you, they'll want more calls, that, and if you don't have strong boundaries um, and you don't have proof of concept or very good kind of service market fit for, for the service that you're delivering, then you're naturally going to have to say, yes, okay, you know, you're going to feel obliged to do that, um, which inevitably nine times out of 10 will lead you to the point where you've just wasted all of your time and you've not made any money from the client. You've actually lost it, okay? So, you're going to have to chase, you're going to have to chase, you're going to have to chase, and then you will get to the point where the contract becomes signed, okay? Again, you might think, great, the contract's signed, they understand the scope, now all they've got to do is go through onboarding, I'm going to give them a checklist, I'm going to say, you know, we need um, to be added to your Klaviyo account or Shopify, um, you know, backend, whatever it might be, and because they've already signed the contract, they're going to be intrinsically motivated to do so. Again, nine times out of ten, you're going to find that the prospective clients that you are dealing with 
um, there will be hurdles when it comes to actually getting the information you need in order to deliver the, deliver the service that they've agreed to. Okay, so you might think, you know, they will be motivated, that you can build on momentum, you send them onboarding, and then 101 different things come up, you know, there'll be five new fires in the business that they've come up against that afternoon, and they don't complete their onboarding documents, they don't go through your guides that you provided them with, and what that means is that you're going to be sat there, basically in a position where, again, uncomfortably, you're going to have to nag them and change them for the information that you need, the information of which that's imperative for you in order to actually deliver your service and get results for that client, okay? So at this stage, you would think that the client is going to be motivated to give you what they need, but something about human psychology, um, they will kind of um, uh, disassociate the cause of their problem, i.e. not giving you access to what you need to, to deliver the service. They will disassociate that away from being something that they've caused and they will put that on you. They will blame you for that, okay? So you will get to the point where you'll be thinking, I'm twiddling my thumbs here. Um, you know, we've gone into our next 30 days of uh, where we have to actually start delivering the service and not least getting results for the client. And we don't have their color scheme, their, their color palettes. We don't have their logos, high resolution ver versions of their logos. So we can't make their email designs. Um, they haven't given us access to Clavio. They've given us the wrong access. Okay. However much you clarify the steps they need to take, if you don't figure out, figure out a way, which I'm going to actually reveal to you in a moment, if you don't figure out a way to get the client intrinsically motivated to build on that initial momentum of them signing the dotted line and agreeing to working with you, then you'll forever be chasing clients like this, um, which will just drive you absolutely insane, okay? So if you haven't experienced it already, take it from me, learn from my experience, okay? And, and change the way you're doing it, all right? So one thing I wanna do here is just show you the differential and the timeline here. So from prospecting to actually getting paid, look at how many steps that have to be taken and, and boxes that need to be ticked before you actually get money in your pocket um, uh, and, and get paid for all of this hard work that you're doing, okay? When I was running the agency like this, this was not making my life a happy one, okay? This was making me very, very stressed. And I got to the point where, you know, even though we were bringing on, um, you know, clients who were paying us five grand plus per month for our email and uh, SMS retention services, all of those clients that we were um, trying to onboard that, you know, fell by the wayside at any singular one point in this process would cause me enough kind of distress and annoyance to think I can't be bothered I don't want to do this anymore you know working with clients where you've put in hours and hours on calls and it looks like they're going to uh, work with you and they've basically lied to you to your face that they will work with you to then fail at the last hurdle here you know they, they either don't sign the contract they want negotiations or revisions that aren't going to work for you as a business um, and, you know, like I say, it just leads to a point where you get very, very stressed. All right. So once onboarding is done, say they have followed the instructions to the team, maybe you've chased them a bit. They've um, actually completed all the info. So you've got what you need. You then have to deliver your service. Well, what's going to happen if you haven't communic communicated effectively? And even if you have communicated effectively, they're going to start blaming you saying, you know, we're seven days in. Where's the work? What have you done? You know, and you're going to have to be in that difficult position where you go back to them and say, um, sorry, it's your fault. You haven't given me the logits. OK, it's not going to create a happy environment. All right. And so when it comes to actually then going into delivering your service, let alone trying to retain this client, um, you know, indefinitely into the future, all of these things are stacking up and, and working against you. All right. So once you deliver your service and maybe you know, you're going to get paid on net 30 basis um, after 30 days. It might be that the client, you know, don't pay you for seven days. Maybe they work off of net 30, um, you know, uh, uh, kind of arrangements with how they pay their suppliers and they don't pay you for th another 30 days on top of that. Um, this inevitably causes delays in you actually getting paid. You're going to have to chase them more and more and more. You're going to, you know, create a very dissatisfactory process and kind of experience for the client um, and you're going to be miserable and unhappy yourself. OK, so. I'm going to try and wrap this video up here. I've got so much to kind of talk about, but um, I want to make this um, you know, easily consumable here. So look at this process here. It's in red for a reason. It's stressful. You don't want to do it. You do not have to do it. And there is an alternative way. Okay. So how do you turn this complex, unnecessary layered um, you know, process here that's kind of chaotic into something that's more reticent or a simplistic reductionist sequential timeline like this? Okay. And I'm going to show you how we did it with our agency. All right. So this was the differential, the, the delta between prospecting and getting paid that I wanted to um, basically eradicate, but not least shorten indefinitely um, with how we redid onboarding in our business, okay? So I wanted to go from prospecting and sales 
to getting paid and then everything else can happen afterwards okay because as a business owner if you are not selling if you're not getting paid if you're not bringing money into the business then you won't exist you won't be there and able to actually deliver a service and help change people's businesses and help change their lives okay so you have to figure out a way to get paid first and then deliver on your service all right and it is possible and i'm going to show you how to do it okay so we went from this chaotic process to going from sale to immediately getting paid contract in hand onboarding service delivery and then retention and i'm going to explain specifically every step of how we basically implemented this and why it's important okay so with the sale, it all comes down to the offer, all right? So I've got a load of other videos on the channel. We do a load of work in the community one-on-one -on -one with you guys who have joined the paid community in order to refine your offer. Um, but if you don't know how to create an offer uh, and one that actually is going to resonate with the type of ideal client um, profile that you want to um, you know, work with, it's going to be very difficult to do that without any support, okay? So drop a comment below. Um, whatever questions you might have, just uh, throw them my way and I can do what I can to uh, help you there, okay? So with the agency, you know, we wanted to re-pivot away from actually being seen as an agency um, because nine out of 10 clients that we were prospectively working with had had their fingers previously burnt by working with, you know, Facebook ads agencies, email agencies that got them on board quickly and just failed to deliver results, okay? So for us, our offer here was it didn't it didn't change dramatically, but for one uh, aspect. Okay, so our offer was to add sixty to two hundred twenty k per month in placed orders via email and SMS. And what we added on to the back of that was within twenty four hours, all your money back. Okay, I've got a load of different videos on the uh, the channel about how we kind of productized our agency. Um, like I say, drop a comment below and I can uh, share the link to those if you are interested, okay? So from here, what we were able to do was then issue a payment link. Now, typically what you do with a traditional agency is you will do your service and in the contract, you will say that um, we'll deploy Stripe uh, subscription billing, whatever it might be, or you'll invoice them after 30 days. And what you do in that process is basically create a load of different hurdles and friction points between issuing your request of payment and actually getting that funds and those payments inside your bank account, okay? Okay. So we went from doing that and then suffering, you know, with payment gateways, all of those additional risks, like luckily we didn't really have any, but um, with in, uh, when it comes to refunds and uh, chargeback, thing, things like that, we switched totally over to open banking, um, where we would issue a, an invoice to our client and then they would pay via their bank to our bank account. So before we had even sent them, uh, you know, kind of uh, like uh, formal onboarding uh, next steps and documentation before we had even started deploying the service for them we had already received um, payment in full inside our bank account to the point that we controlled everything okay so the risk the payment risk for us was totally eradicated and like I say we were able to do that based on a number of different reasons that I've explained in other videos um, which all stem originally from how we changed our offer okay so from there once payment was received Instead of saying to the client, right, we're going to create a proposal for you, um, we could create a scope of, uh, you know, scope of works, we'll itemize them in a PDF that you need to read through, it's going to be eight pages long and talk about our company and how great we are. If they're already at this point that they've paid you, you've already sold them, they're committed, you've already got momentum that you can build on here. So instead of issuing a contract that they could come back and redline and cross things out and negotiate on, what we would do is send a boilerplate agreement. Okay, So typically our boilerplate agreements are going to be a purchase agreement which means that whatever they've paid, uh, whatever they've transferred to us, um, they have basically made a formal uh, agreement and commitment with us to continue the relationship so that we can deliver that service, okay? So we're never gonna be in a position where um, we potentially deliver some work to the client. Um, you know, maybe we've done 14 days of work and then the client messages us and says, oh, look, sorry, I know I signed the contract, but I don't wanna work with you anymore or we've run out of money. I'll just pay you the, for the 14 days, um, you know, the two weeks that you've done. You've obviously not done any more work for those, you know, that initial 30 day period. So, you know, we can dust our hands of it. Fair enough. Well, it's not fair enough. You know, when you've done all of this work, you've invested all of this um, energy and emotional and social and financial capital into actually onboarding and uh, uh, closing that client, you actually are going to be out of pocket, you know, not just time and energy wise, but finances wise too. OK, so that might work for brands who are, you know, not being honest or clients who are not being honest with you and they are engaging with you based on the fact that they think they can have 
one foot in the door, one foot out, that inevitably, you know, they'll see how you are, pay you maybe for what you've done and then cancel the agreement, you know, because nine times out of 10, if you're just starting an agency, if you have no money in the bank, you're not gonna be able to contest any of these, you know, negging on contracts, all right? If the client says to you, I'm not gonna pay, you're not gonna be able to do anything, okay? So we wanna get you, get you into where you've not only, um, taken money and, and uh, secured funds up front before you've done any work, um, that you're also in a position that the client cannot back out, all right? So that's why we issue boilerplate agreements. And simply boilerplate agreements, they kind of sound slightly nefarious, but it just means that there's no negotiation. So if a client says, oh, I'm not happy about item, blah, 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 whatever, um, it doesn't matter, they, they either sign it or they don't, okay? Um, now typically what we do is tie in our guarantee into the boilerplate, so if they don't sign the boilerplate then they won't get our guarantee, um, and also there's no negotiations in a boilerplate agreement, okay? So it's why we have this arrangement in this order here. Right, so when it comes to onboarding, like I said, I'm just gonna race you this very, very quickly. This can be very simple when you have eradicated the risk of not being paid and the client not giving you what they need, okay? So we're at this position here, so instead of being at a point where we're saying to the client, oh great, you know, this is what we wanna do for you, this is how much it's gonna cost, you know, oh, they've signed the contract, oh, but we're chasing them for logins or whatever it might be, um, we're in a position here where, you know, quite frankly, if the client doesn't give us anything, then it's absolutely no risk uh, to us, it's no skin off our nose, okay? So as part of our um, boiler plate agreement here, um, taking funds up front, we've already uh, closed the client and we're building on that momentum, that energy and excitement of having done so and them agreeing. Um, if they then spend 90 days and, and don't give us what we need, then we just don't do the work for them, okay? Um, now, we will have in our contracts a specific period of time that they actually have to deliver that information. At the moment, we have it as 24 hours. So if they don't deliver the information we need, they've already paid us, bear in mind. If they don't deliver the information we need within 24 hours, then we won't deliver the service for them and it's non-refundable. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, about when it comes to intrinsically motivating and driving your clients to actually take action and do what you need them to do in order for you to deliver your service and to deliver results to them, okay? So the blame and the kind of frame here we have a frame of power. We have a frame of authority. We are in a position to say to the client, well, look, you know, it's no skin off our nose. You've paid us. You've signed the contract. If you don't give us what we need, then we'll just work with our other clients. So, you know, it doesn't matter to us. So they are in a position where they have to do what you are asking of them, okay? Which is not the case with this traditional agency uh, model, all right? So from there, what we do, and you never want to layer for layering sake, okay? So you might think that you want to have a complex uh, funnel in, in high level or click funnels or a website, whatever it might be. When you have a process like this, you can operate uh, with simplicity, okay? And simplicity for onboarding uh, can simply fall in the form of a, a, a one email, okay? So we will send an email. This will have access instructions. It will say, we need X uh, and Y by this date or this time. Um, this is how you do it, so we don't leave it up to them. If we need access to their Clavio account, we send them a 30 second video that we've got already created. We, it's a generic one that we send to every single new prospective client, every, every single new brand that we work with, the e-com agency. They can follow those instructions. We're gonna get our access instantly. And then what we do within that first onboarding email is just reiterate and reestablish the timeline. We say this is what we're gonna do over the next 24 hours. Um, so basically, so that if the client has any other questions, um, you know, we're kind of matching those early days without the need to do additional uh, and ongoing calls, all right? so. What we do from there is, is give the client and issue them a calendar link where they can basically, if they need to, book what we call a, a bonus call with us or a clarity call. Okay, so they won't typically do this because we already haven't delivered the bill because we're waiting for them to complete their obligations through onboarding, all right? So it is a way if any clients, you know, they, they sort of have the need, they wanna ask you loads of questions, um, they can book a 15 minute call with us and we can um, direct that call to the relevant member of our team and they can help you know, match any of those sort of questions and, and queries that the client might have at this stage. But from there, if they don't book a call, we dive straight into service delivery, okay? So scooting back to our offer here that we add 60 to 220K uh, per month in placed orders via SMS, email and SMS um, in 24 hours or you, or you don't pay. 
Um, we will start delivering that service and we do indeed deliver that over 24 hours. So if we have a product called the Ecom Email Accelerator, we have now opened up our 10 million um, plus build and release infrastructure to anybody like you watching this who might want to um, create their own Ecom Email agency and you don't want to dedicate 10,000 hours to actually becoming the best email marketer, we will do service delivery for you, okay? So there's, I've got various links out there. Again, drop a comment below if you're interested in that and I can share it with you, all right? So from here, what we do, we deliver the service, and you might think, oh, you know, where do we go from there? You know, you've, you've moved away from a model where you're charging a retainer, um, which bear in mind, retainers only work uh, and, will, and will only work um, dependent on your client's willingness to abide by their contractual obligations and continue paying you, okay? So you might think, oh, I've signed a three-month three agreement or six-month agreement. You've got no guarantee that the client's going to pay you for one month, five months, two months, unless you can contest it, unless you have funds behind you um, and you can go, you know, the legal route if you need to, you know, which is obviously in business, it's something that uh, can be all too common, but it's definitely best avoided if you can do that. All right. Specifically, if you're starting off your agency, you're not going to have the power or the financial leverage to do that. All right. So. It's a good question. You know, you've moved away from this model here where you're charging a perceived retainer. That's projected cash flow. That's, um, you know, lowers risk for you and gives you financial security. And now we're moving to this process here with build and release where you're getting paid upfront for a system. Well, how do you continue getting paid from that client? It's a good question. All right. The way that you do this is naturally by building on the momentum that you've built in this initial onboarding process. Okay. So when the client has um, been, you know, had their breath taken away by your offer, they have paid you, they've signed the contract and they've given you everything they need. You know, normally we get everything we need within a matter of hours now because they are intrinsically motivated to give us that. There's a, uh, an opportunity cost and a financial cost to them, a severe one, if they do not provide us with the information we need to deliver on our promises, then we build on that momentum to then go into um, our retention phase, okay? So very, very quickly, once we've delivered that service, bear in mind, we are delivering a system and an infrastructure that marketing agencies will often promise and fail to deliver to these types of clients that we are um, closing. They'll fail to do that within seven to 12 months. We are actually promising it achieving it and doing it and delivering it within 24 hours, okay? That's how good our offer is. And from there, once we've delivered it, the clients are blown away. So they can't believe that they get all of the, um, you know, foundational and advanced flows that we deliver. They can't believe they get the 12 month bespoke content calendar with specific subject lines and send times and copy already created. They can't believe that they're getting the 20 plus design templates and all of the Christmas, Black Friday and January New Year, uh, New Year sales um, templates that we also provide too. They can't believe that they get that in such a short period of time because everybody that they've ever worked with before has only told them that it, they can do it over a seven to 12 month period, all right? So from there, what we do is hit them with a cross sell or a down sell. We say, look, we've delivered on our promise. You paid for it. We've delivered it. Everything's great. Our trust, um, you know, is just, uh, it is kind of growing exponentially during these one to three days of actually onboarding the client. Um, and what we do there is basically cross or down sell services that we know they'll need. So we say, look, we've um, given you everything you need in order to future proof your brand. But what we can do as well for X price is manage your campaigns. It's going to be four campaigns per month, um, whatever it might be. It's this cost. OK, or it's going to be, you know, five new designs or we're in November. It's Black Friday month. We'll do bespoke new Black Friday designs for you and Cyber Monday designs, whatever it might be. Or failing that, we just do sort of generic tech optimization. And you can start playing around with the pricing of how you, um, you know, you set the kind of value of these cross sales and down sales too, okay? So it's all about momentum. It's all about minimizing complexity and the time it takes for you to actually deliver on your promises and uh, you know, provide results for the clients. And it's all about moving away from a frame where you are just a, another agency, another third party service provider that the client is inevitably going to be unhappy with and blame you for problems that quite frankly, they have caused, okay? So let me know what you thought, guys, of this video. Like I say, I wanna get all of you away from this model and to this simplified model here. Um, drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm gonna be dropping a, a ton of new videos over the next coming weeks um, too, because there's a lot of information in my head, um, a lot of experience over the last six years of, of actually um, you know, running this business and uh, it's super enjoyable to uh, hear from you guys and help you out, okay? So like I say, drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. All right, cheers guys.